To enjoy this and other great episodes on Patreon, check out the link in the description and subscribe via the Black Kluge tier for full access to over 100 exclusive episodes. For those of you who would like some QF swag on TeePublic t-shirts, magnets, mugs, what have you, also click on the link in the description. I can't tell you how many uh, times I've helped Jan out. And Jan, don't invite me to your apartment anymore, cocksucker. Your big fag parties. Motherfucker sitting there with his goddamn caterer. I'm done with you. Fuck not. Oh, no. Well, guess what? Jan, I'm never having sex with you. <laughs> <laughs> your handsome boyfriend. I've oh. entertained your no children. Hey, Vinny, how am I like her? Okay, you ready? Yeah. I, I mean, shame this, on you. This is like that Kennedy. Spy on you. No. <laughs> You're both divorced. Okay. You're both living apart from your kids. <laughs> you both had three kids. Yeah. You both talking to a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were both um, in your 40s. She was in her 40s. Uh -huh. in age now. You both battled CBS over money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You were both mentally abused by parents. Yeah. Both of you see psychiatrists. Oh, <laughs> psychoanalysis. I've only been there three years. Well, I hope you don't get as much out of it as she did. Yeah. I think <laughs> both of you like your wine. <laughs> <laughs> um, both of you could play sports. Yeah. Judy hung with gays and, and you hung out with Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> People who treat people like shit after Bullshit. they give you a gift? Are you kidding me? I, I, no, are you kidding? You know what I do? I have a special book. I open Dude, it. you didn't even touch it. You haven't. You, 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 my twelve hundred dollar Neil Young gift that you no, I told you. I my you face. gave it to me. No, no, no bullshit. You're, you're the worst for gifts. Did I write you a note? Howard, did I write you a note? Bullshit time where you're no. trying to fuck with me. No. You are the rudest gift receiver you're of wrong. all fucking time. I have a book. No. On the air, we, sit, you. we have fun. $1,200 fucking on picture. Air. It's in a storage bin. On the air. You love rubbing in my face. We, on the Go air. fuck yourself. Well, then let me respond to that. On the air, we kid each other. But the fact of the matter oh, is. This is on the air. I created a, a new pick, guys. No, you didn't. Wait fuck a you. second. Here's what I do. Fuck you. Here's what I do, Artie. I you don't even touch a gift. Bullshit. I have a book. I write down everyone who gives me Somebody else spin. should do this bit because you're not allowed to. You're the worst S gift S receiver of all fucking time. So you're going to keep interrupting me because that's your shtick. No, I'm that's tell not you my shtick. It's your shtick. I make you're sure a rude every, prick with um, gifts. Oh, no, liar. You're the rude prick. The I have an, a book with everybody. I know you got me nothing for Christmas. It's you, like everybody else here. I, got, I, I just spent I just spent about 20 grand on your party. Fuck you. I knew the 20 grand was coming. Yeah, oh, I got that really sucker. Found out. And he made yeah, well, I don't, I don't know a guy who's ever left here that has left on a good note, no matter what. Oh, sure they have. Sure they have. Yeah, like who? Scott Eisinger. No, Scott Eisinger didn't leave. Great. He left on a great note. We were oh. still friends. <laughs> You're oh. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to QF, a podcast about Howard Stern. I'm your host, Phil Moore, a.k.a. Jim Fix. And with me is Sam. How are you, my dear? How are you tonight? I'm good. We're going to handle uh, tonight, finally, the Iron Man mask saga that it will co goes back to, um, according to my records here, August 10th, 2010. Keep in mind, guys, that uh, John Favreau has directed uh, part Iron Man 1, which was a huge – people seem to forget that kickstarted the whole Marvel Universe because – It did. Had it had it not been a success, you would never have seen Thor and Mario Guardians of the Galaxy and all these things because it hinged on a, a former drug addict pretty much and, an, and a director that had not had loads of success. But he'd you know, been pretty, pretty, pretty solid director, I would say, in his, in his day. I don't know one person that didn't go to see that movie at that time. And it was great. The first one. It was great. The second, the the second one, one and the third one were, were ass. But, you know, oh, well, they still made shitloads of money. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, this is, so what happened was on a previous interview, uh, John Favreau called in, always called in. He was never in studio about the film Cowboys and Aliens, which was a massive disaster. It, was, it cost something <laughs> like $160 million and made exactly that amount. So lost more than half of its money because they promoted the shit out of it. I never saw it. It looked stupid. And I don't know if anybody has. Did you? I, re I didn't see it, but I do remember always seeing previews and just it was bombarded. The uh, ever I, I remember that time period so well because there, you couldn't go watch TV for more than a half an hour without seeing something about it pop up. So like private parts, it was it was promoted like crazy for obvious reasons. They thought it was probably going to be a bomb. 
I, I don't know. I was like, wow, they're really promoting the fuck out of this movie. It looks so bad. <laughs> you wonder how it can get so bad. So anyway, Favreau call, was calling in about that, really to promote that. And then it suddenly got about, he was, you know, you know, he and he was a, a stern fan, clearly. So here we're going to start yeah. again, first of all. The first thing is, yeah, uh, bitching about his maquette. And a maquette, for those of you who don't know, is a, like a stand-up doll that's like 40 centimeters or something like that, a 40, 40, 40 centimeters, a foot high, let's say. And uh, <laughs> Sorry, the metric conversion on, on in progress, guys. Um, I don't know, like a foot high, uh, rep, like a, a model of whatever something. It could be the Hulk. It could be usually it's like superhero shit or anime shit. And it's really solid and heavy. And you place it whatever and sometimes it can have electronics in it it can be lit up or sounds and stuff like that and this is what Favreau had sent to him you'll have to hear it for yourself yeah 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 when we had John Favreau on the other day the director of <laughs> why does he say Favreau <laughs> <laughs> I know he just he adds that syllable he Apple. does that I didn't realize how far or how long this saga was too when you brought it up I forgot that there was all these parts to this this is so oh. good I can't wait God sorry because this will be multi-part I don't know how many but we're looking at at least three the way we do it the Iron Man. Man. yeah I kind of I yelled at him a little bit and I didn't yell at him. I love the guy. But I did say, you know, if you really wanted to thank me, you would have sent me some memorabilia from Iron Man because I'm sure. such a big fan of Iron Man. And so I got a big box from John Favreau today. I got all excited. I thought I was getting like, you know, Iron Man's, you know, I don't know. Some helmet. Helmet or. or and, you know, listen, he, he doesn't have to send me anything, actually. Okay. It's a couple things. First of all, he says, you got to pay attention to the first, very first bit of the clip, guys. He says, I don't collect memorabilia. Why don't, then, then why would you ask, why don't, why would you say on the air, why don't you send me something if you don't collect memorabilia? Meanwhile, you have a huge warehouse of stern bullshit. Yeah, that for your, and you wouldn't let your parents take down a poster for fuck's sake <laughs> I, of, your, of yourself. Probably um, moldy. So, but, he listened to him say that what I want, I'm not, I want a helmet or something of his, like the actual Iron Man helmet. Yeah, he, that guy is going to send you the most important, <laughs> the most important item of the costume in the movie. Right. Oh, oh, he's so self-important. Well, the, think of someone saying like, you know, uh, let's say he had uh, Al when he was still alive, Al Hendricks, Jimmy Hendricks dad. And, and he said like, you know, Hen you know, I love, you know, Howard, I love your show. And you, you talk about so much. You say so many nice things about my son and asking for the Woodstock guitar. Yes. <laughs> I, he, but you notice, though, he only does this with some celebrities like he wouldn't say this to, I don't know, Reese Witherspoon or Madonna saying, oh, you know, I was really expecting, you know, the the tutu from her like a virgin performance from the VMAs now that she did my show. Yeah, I mean, he wouldn't ask these sort of favors from certain celebrities, but celebrities that I think he thinks he has something over or they worship him in some way way shape or form yeah. like a fanboy or a fangirl that's, that's when he has this expectation that is ridiculous yeah i, I mean i i think he expects to have like because uh, jeff probst is a super fan but he's not a massive celebrity he wants the little thing at the end of survivor when they, each episode when they put out the torch so whatever that thing that you know he would expect something like that Meanwhile, that's a good one. Meanwhile, you know, like these are so certain things get eventually auctioned for shitloads of money. You're not going to just give that away. Number one. And a lot of times these things are not the property of the director or even the star. They're the property of the studios. And Marvel keeps everything so close to the vest. It's like, do you think just anything from Marvel is going to get sold or given away for nothing? No, it would only be given away to someone who like Robert Downey Jr., who made 50 million and, and you know, per at per movie or even more and shared and some of the profits and stuff or didn't and that's why he was paid so much so, or a lot of these you know. a lot of these things that you think are trendy now end up being historical later like Marilyn Monroe's dress for example and they yeah. end up in you know museums and they end up having like huge art displays for yeah. these people of uh, you know the past and I think what if one day now that we have all these Marvel movies say 20 years from now they have an exhibit where they have all the costumes and they yeah. do all the and, and Howard has it they I go mean, straight yeah the Smithsonian has Captain Kirk's chair from the first Star Trek that's something that absolutely belongs there it was you know it was um 
it was a, a groundbreaking show and, and obviously means so much to so many people across the world, not just in North America or it's states right. or whatever country. So Iron Man would be in that category definitely later on down the down the line, regardless of where my Marvel goes. In terms of cinema, whether you like the Marvel films or don't, you can't deny the impact they had on the landscape of cinema. That's true. I also think too, what do you give guests when you go when they go to your show? You give them Water. nothing. <laughs> Not Water, there's no bagels. That <laughs> no. lasted a whole what month? Month. Yeah. <laughs> they were too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> if they cost five cents, they'd be too expensive for him. Oh. That's the sad part. <clears throat> but it's this. Th he goes, thanks again for all your support. This is a pre-release sideshow collectible Iron Man maquette. What's that? <laughs> I didn't know either. <laughs> I opened up the box. It's like it's something they're selling. Like it's almost a commercial for this. Some memorabilia. Some in other words, you could of... go buy it in the store. Yeah. It's not real memorabilia from Iron Man. It's It's merchandise. Yeah, it's very, very, you know, but I'm a, I'm a 56-year-old guy. Where am I going to put not, an Iron Man maquette? Ralph. What would you do with the fucking real legitimate article? But the only thing you're <laughs> bitching about is the fact that it's not from the movie. Right. I was going to say, so what, well, you're a 50-year-old man. What are you going to do with an Iron Man helmet? Wear it around the house? Scoop some <laughs> litter? I mean, what are you talking about? I yeah. also think, too, those toys become worth something eventually. Yeah. Oh, almost they anything do. these days, magic cards, you know, like the, uh, you know, anything vintage has a certain value. Pez dispensers, for fuck's sake. You know how much money some of those things go for on eBay? Because there are people always looking for them. What, was the, what were those things back in the day, those teddy bears? What were they called? Beanie babies. Beanie babies. Do you remember, do you remember the craze uh, for them? I have hundreds of them in my parents' basement. We saved them all. Those Princess Diana bears I have are worth a fucking fortune. Will I don't you guys know ever why. Sell them? Will you guys ever I, sell them? I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them. I I mean, they just appreciate year over year. Over year so I don't know. Mm -hmm. We have all the bears pretty much from Ty because we were obsessed with collecting them. And sure. So, but that's what I'm saying. Howard, you won't play with a helmet either. So what difference does it make? Let the toy appreciate and shut up. Yeah, exactly. It's a miniature. It's, right? it's a what? It's a miniature. Hold on. I know you might go. I'm sorry. It's a what? It's a miniature. A right? miniature yeah. replica of Iron Man. Yeah. In a pose. They call them action figures. Yeah. <laughs> it's a doll. I mean, what am I going to do? A doll. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, like, I had nothing to do with Iron Man. Like, if it was a Howard Stern maquette, maybe I could get into it. Uh -huh. but. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what do you want? The, <laughs> you want the helmet in the, of the maquette to have, like, a wig underneath or I was, I was gonna say. giant sunglasses? <laughs> what thinking, are you I'm talking of, about? I'm thinking of that episode where you talked about the Lego hair. Yes. <laughs> that you'd what? snap on. Maybe he wants a Bianca maquette, maybe. What did, I mean, well, why would he want a mannequin of himself or a ma maquette Ma of himself? whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah, well, that doesn't make any sense either. Or like Christ, the whole the point is like this guy, this director is sending you something personally. That's the value it's supposed to have. It's not about whether it's a, a, a fucking piece from the movie. You're supposed to be, wow, this is from John Favreau. He's a, a famous director now. And, you know, he sent me something personally. I should be appreciative of that. Him being it's, honest and saying, I can't appreciate it because it's not something important. It just betrays more how much of an asshole he is, as well as how ungrateful he is with gifts. We should do a whole series of him receiving gifts oh, and being an asshole. That has to be a special for Patreon. Um, yeah. I really think this reminds me of the Dr. Drew and the Mad Magazines, too. This has a yes. lot of the similar tone to it about how ungrateful he is. It also screams narcissism when he said he wanted it to look like him or a Howard Stern. Me, yeah. me, me. And yeah. the, a gift is supposed to be about the person who gives it to you. Not I mean, you can like the gift, but it's the gesture that's supposed to mean something. Well, yeah, and if it really is a shitty gift, I mean, if he sent, like, an empty box, okay, I, I can understand. Or if he sent you something that was, you know, like, just a card. But actually, the card is just as meaningful if it's from the person. I, I save every letter I ever received, every Christmas card I ever have. I still have them somewhere. I, maybe that's a, a, a personality a fault of mine. I don't think so. Uh, I think if people went to the trouble to send you something and it came from the heart, you should never throw that away. I agree. And so I mean, it's not like they're going to be put in a museum, but I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll, you know, ever read an old diary of you you had or an old letter. It's mm -hmm. actually kind of fascinating because it's a, it's a time capsule thing. Anyway, let's continue. So I was actually disappointed in my gift. 
And I Let me see that. I haven't even seen it. A breastplate that was used in the movie or something. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a statue of Iron Man, basically, that they're selling that, that you could go buy in a store. Right. Yeah. Well, you don't have it here. When he said the breastplate or something, I was just thinking, you know what? He wanted that costume to just have a gay sex party with Ralph dressed as Iron Man. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Suck my repulsor beam. <laughs> Could you picture the two of them just running around with breastplates and helmets? Len, Len Young and I, Len Young and I just just recorded our second part of our episode that hasn't been released yet. And at one point, he brought up when when Artie was fighting with Ralph about the whole the um, the stealing money thing, and he goes, "Go fuck your Star Trek figures in the ass." <laughs> See, he knows. I mean, do you think Ralph was turned on by his faux communism look during the serious sex? <laughs> <laughs> All those what, what's what's her name? Randy St. Nicholas uh, photos, photo shoots. Yeah, that was something else. Yeah, this is a good look. This is a good look, Raul. This is a good look, Howard. You should do this more often when, when I'm rimming you. You remind, you remind me of Che Guevara. I'm so turned on. <laughs> I have it here. Let me see it. You want Gary, bring him my maquette. <laughs> oh. That's the new term, is it? Maquette. Yeah, I hope Beth lets you display it proudly. Best John. John Favreau. Where would you put this? Like, that's nothing, you know. I wanted something. I was hinting for something that no one else would have. Something from the movie. Right. Sulu maquette, would you? No. I've got plenty of those. I'm sure, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't really want that. A maquette. Oh, what do they God. charge for? Look, there's my maquette. Oh, gee. There's Iron Man. Hmm. <laughs> Where am I going to put this? <laughs> what do you think I am, five? I mean, look at that thing. It's not yeah. bad, though. It looks, it's a nice He's he, he's he's just destroyed his own argument. I'm fifty something. I don't I don't collect memorabilia. First of all, lies. Second of all, um, you know, you say, oh, where, where am I going to put it again? Where were you going to put the thing from the movie? It's still memorabilia. That's the point. Where were you going to hang a breastplate? <laughs> I don't. I, I also. You have 50 million bedrooms and multiple yeah. properties. I'm sure you can find some dresser in a spare room and toss the cat on there. Who gives a fuck? The other thing is, who's going to see it? No one goes to see your house anyway. And who's who are you going to impress with your? You're going to put it next to the Limp Biscuit Platinum Award from K Rock, up in the bowl in the bowling gonna, alley. Beth is going to leave you for the maquette. <laughs> <laughs> she take it and sell it. No, it's beautiful. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But. I mean, yeah, they're doing a better job with these collectibles. All right, it comes with a hardcover book that explains to you. I like the book. Oh, it has the, a the history of the company, and then oh. it shows you all the other ones. Like you can get uh, the Abominable Snowman, the Evil Queen, Laura Craft, Tomb Raider, Gandalf. You know, it just shows you all the different ones they make. Mm. Kiss. They make Kiss ones. I don't know. Like, I know Jason was looking at this thing like it was the greatest thing he ever saw. Does it have? A those things are super expensive, actually. I've seen them at Spencer's and like other collectible stores in the mall. They not, they sell weird items and they're not cheap at all. No, and size it doesn't even necessarily. It's not even necessarily dictated by size. It's about the in, the amount of intricacy. It's also demand. Like some things, like uh, I, I've, there's a couple of gift stores I've seen. Not gift stores, but they're more like they're more like what model shops used to be. And they mm -hmm. have all these animation characters from Japan that I don't know who the fuck they are. But to to the anime world, they're all like, oh my god, that's you know that's so and so. Not not like Pikachu, but kind of like that because the the, the whole the geekdom the, the whole ge yes. geek kingdom of movies and an cartoons and animation they're huge into that more than i even i can imagine like they it goes beyond it. having an iron man t-shirt and wearing it it's the books carts anything like hair clips you name it they have it like um they have those maquettes for the stranger things people oh, and wow. the cast characters yeah so they've seen them and um Mia likes this one character, Eleven, specifically the most, but that she's just way overpriced. And, you know, I'm not going to spend all this money on a figurine. It's just crazy. It but crazy. they're all they're they're all hot items. They are. People like that shit. Do you remember years ago on TV, the Franklin Mint, like we used to sell all kinds of collectible stuff made of pewter. Franklin Mint made of pewter. Like what? Like, for example, the Starship Enterprise, my brother got this for Christmas, like in the mid 90s from his girlfriend, now wife at the time. And it had like gold finished, like 
engine bits or whatever. Oh, it was cool. really like it actually is kind of cool, but it's it literally is just something you hang somewhere. Like I don't know in what household it would look. <laughs> it would not make you look like a dork if you put it somewhere. But if you had some kind of collection. massive fandom or collection, yeah, it would be great for someone who loves that stuff. But for everybody else, they just think you were, you know, stupid. Yeah, my um, sister. They, wouldn't, they my, wouldn't get it. My brother-in-law is one of these geek people who mm -hmm. collects these things. And so he has his like little man cave downstairs where they're all displayed and like nobody can touch them. And yeah. that's just the way it is. And I, it, I kind of also equated to the people who collect those like towns at Christmas that are super expensive. Each piece is like hundreds of dollars, like these glass houses you put around your Christmas tree and the train oh. goes around and it's like a whole village. But they're wow. very expensive pieces. They're not right. like the cheap Christmas town. And they're so intricate or or neat. I mean, everybody has something they're into. Sure. Uh, yeah. For me, it's like eight by tens, eight by signed eight by tens yeah. by people who I, you know, could be the things, but thankfully things that don't take up any space. They could go in a bookshelf if you needed to or on a wall. Yeah. I'm all about not clutter. No yeah. clutter. Yeah. Big time. A stand it has. To yeah, it has a stand. OK. Mm. Maybe I'll give it to Jason. Is something like that worth anything? It's not worth anything because it because the company makes it, right? Well, it's the price that they charge. Oh, wait. So the fucking guy, he's like stuttering John. All of a sudden now it's about the value of it. I, I thought it was. It's like, who cares? What he's the like, fuck? He, what, you want to know what? I bet he's upset the company hasn't made one of him. It's bothering him. <laughs> Maybe. That might be a good part of it. I mean, one of the first things out of his mouth was why, you know, I could get it if it was about Howard Stern. So do you imagine he has all that fucking, like, if, when he says he has a warehouse, he's probably not joking. I wonder what he is doing with all of that stuff. Is he still paying for that storage or did he just finally say fuck it and throw it out? He must, but I do believe that there's a guy on eBay selling all kinds of horrible stuff, like a lot of signed crap and a lot of uh, items that could only have come from staff, like watches that were given to staff and what have you. And I, I think that, in my opinion, the guy's based in New Jersey, and uh, uh, G Chup sent me uh, a little map thing, like a map screenshot, and he mm -hmm. said, this is not too far from where Ralph lives. It would not surprise me if this was Ralph with a pseudonym on eBay selling stuff oh. from Howard, and probably even as payment, like rather than pay Ralph something, he's like, here, you take this, and whatever you can get for it, that's your money, that's your payment. You know, that's what Kim Kardashian used to do before she became famous. She cleaned out celebrities' closets and posted their stuff on eBay and would take a cut for wow. what she'd organize the closet, sell everything on eBay. She'd deal with all the sale end and the shipping and whatever else. But sure. then she would get a cut at the end of when everything was done being sold. And oh, wow. maybe Ralph is, you know, selling merch from on the down, all these on years. the down low yeah well because yeah. it's, it's 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 priced through the roof i mean if you go on you'll see like uh whether whether i don't think it's it may still be there but the fart there's a fart man costume being sold they talk about later that there's three fart man costumes but one of them was you know worn on on whatever on, in the movie but there were three right. two backups or something like that and um you know like is something like you know fifty thousand for this stupid or fifteen thousand, whatever thousands of dollars, which no one's going to pay that money for that shit. Nobody even barely knows who he is under you know thirty five. Easily, yeah. And yeah. so what the value is, you know, you the other thing about all these things is you have to know when to sell them because otherwise the value just like people just stop, they lose interest, and all of a sudden, uh, Johnny Carson who. Right. Exactly. A lot of people, too, who are new listeners, who are younger or older even, don't even know about the fart man days. It's no. just like not they have no idea what he used to be like. Mm -hmm. And it's only when someone dies that you deter determine the real value of things, because uh, I'm trying to think of people that died and all of a sudden their stuff went through the roof. Um, I mean, it, it happens all the time. Elvis, uh, Freddie Mercury. Uh, this, this, and But it really is also dictated on how rare something is. Like if someone didn't sign a lot of autographs, their signature's worth a shitload. If it's someone super iconic like Brando, also massively worth something. Um I mean, Princess Diana's jewelry got auctioned off and went for a fuck ton of money. Was it also for charity or was it literally just whoever gets it, gets it? 
I think it was highest bidder for just like some certain pieces we're selling mm. at. What what is that Christie's or some Softies. sort of auction house? So, yeah, yeah, it's a like real ritzy auction place. Well, then it's probably well, whatever. It's a private seller. Probably probably Harry <laughs> it needs a little bit of scratch. <laughs> so, oh God, he's so <laughs> creepy. Yeah, he is a little bit. Here's John. Maybe John can explain this uh. gift. It's worth like how much is that worth, John? What do I have to do for you now? How do we make this? No. How do we make this right? I didn't even know you'd be. Away. I didn't even know you'd be listening. But it was like kind of funny. It's like it's like a toy that people buy in a store, right? Uh, you know, Ralph would have shit his pants if I said Absolutely. That. Right. Yeah, I know. Okay, here's here's what we do. You thought I wanted a toy? Yeah, I, I, look, give it to Ralph. No, tell I'm going to give. Tell him to send it for. Tell him I sent it for him. No, I'm going to give it to Jason, maybe. He's okay. another one of the geeks. Let me so. see what I could do. I'm going to send you. I'm going to send you Robert Downey's pinky. No, no, that, no. That's, that's good. <laughs> John, listen to me. John, honestly, seriously, I'm being. I'm being serious. Forget the radio. I don't want anything. I'm just saying that, and that was really sweet of you to send me. I don't want to seem ungrateful, but it's just it's something oh, that you really, don't? you know. I think kids would buy, right? It's an Iron I, Man replica. Well, unfortunately, this is the human impersonator or human impersonator, as the case may be trying to say what he knows should be said in this situation when you're fucking caught being an asshole, but doesn't mean a thing of it. Like, he really what? is more about everything, the part, like, I just thought it was something more valuable. I also just, he, you know, kind of regressed and said, I really appreciate it, yada, yada, and then said, I just, but, you know, but, but <laughs> and he cannot help himself. It's just no. unbelievable. Right. The, the why move, would you the, send a toy? What would you? Iron Man is a made-up superhero. Comic. Yeah, it's a what comic. What do you want me to send you? It's a fucking kids movie, practically. <laughs> what does he want? And like a an inkwell station with a like Iron Man, you know, on the thing. There's nothing about it that isn't like dorky. Right. Do you want like the arm of the Iron Man suit with like the blaster gun attached? I mean, what? Like the only situation where Iron Man an Iron Man something wouldn't be dorky would be like at Halloween, which, by the way, guys, I mean, like Halloween costumes should be used to be about scary things. Now it's about anybody like you, you have to dress the kid up as Superman. We did that as kids too, Shazam and shit like that. But if you're going to dress up as Iron Man for Halloween and you got an Iron Man like T-shirt on and stuff, OK, that makes perfect sense. That's when it's that's when it's fine. Or when you're in line to go get your thing signed by Robert Downey Jr. at a con. Yeah, I get it completely. You're in your element. But there's nothing he could get from this that isn't going to be considered for kids. Well, what does he want? Pepper tied up in a box and sent over? Hey, it's Gwyneth Paltrow. She hasn't eaten in three days. Yeah. Here she is. <laughs> <laughs> you know the uh, you know the uh, body language guys the uh, the yeah, body language I, yeah, panel. Yeah. My body okay, so, yeah, yeah. so they're so they are um, they're taking apart some of the Gwyneth Paltrow um, footage from mm -hmm. the trial, the ski trial, which ended today, I think, or yes, today or yesterday. Yeah, I think was, she I won. Guess, yeah, and so she gets her dollar. She gonna frame that dollar. <laughs> so um, the the thing the thing I allowed, like I went into the forum and I just saw that they were on Facebook. They have a page, and people were just talking mostly anti Gwyneth, like she's coming off poorly and stuff like that. And I just posted a picture of the box at the end of seven. <laughs> <laughs> That's so smart. <laughs> and I remember thinking, like, this might get me banned, but I have a feeling those guys have a better sense of humor than, than I think that. they probably do. Yeah, yeah she came off really poorly. I, I, I just thought it was so weird how the entire process is being recorded, obviously, but when it's over and you're done sitting there, you're going to put a big notebook up in front of your face, you self-important bitch. Shut up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, you so someone it's just like that old expression, um, you know, wh why was the movie Seven such a hit? Because <laughs> you know, Gwyneth Paltrow gets killed at the end. I go, well, you give people what they want, you can't keep them away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And she was new at that time, like in terms of the business. That wasn't like the the hatred didn't really start getting uh, in until the Weinstein shit. I'd have to say the hatred really ramped up too around the time when her and Madonna were hanging out and talking about Kabbalah and yoga. Oh. That was an ultimate like. You oh, eye roll. Yeah. Jesus. Lee, there's a market in this stuff for adults. Is there? That's an oh, adult yeah. toy. But don't they make more of those? Like, in other words, it's not a rare thing. Oh, it's thing. not a one of a kind. No. In other words, you could have it, Robin, if you Absolutely. went to the store and bought it. Absolutely. Right. Say no more. I get the hint. No, I no, apologize. But, but, John, I don't want anything. Honestly. I understand. 
But that's not an Iron Man thing. That's just something you guys are selling. That's the the merchandising you're doing based on the fact that the movie's so popular. Yeah, why don't you send me a cut from McDonald's when they have the uh, you know <laughs> picture of Iron Man? He should. Yeah. He should. He I should send him some piece of shit. He should. He should send him the Happy Meal toy. Honestly, the, he didn't have to pay for the giant maquette. Right. So, what what are you complaining about? Yeah. No, it's not. It's not unique. It's not special. This is the same as the McCartney guitar that was signed but not yeah. played by him and the Beatles. The Bowie guitar, which we have to do a thing on, uh, which oh, I yeah. completely I keep forgetting about it. But he was such a dick about that. And then when he died, it was special. Right. And we may have to do a Bowie eulogy special to just go back in that one and just I'll have to go back. It won't be a rescinding, obviously, because he was never on the show and there wasn't any kind of situation like that. It would just be more like a stomping on the fucking corpse all the way into the ground. Um, and he was just just it's just the worst eulogy giver ever. Anyway, uh, what I love is John actually called in. Most celebrities wouldn't do this. I'm thrilled he called in. I like the yeah. pinky comment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll, send you a, I'll send you a Slurpee cup. <laughs> no, no, actually, naming uh, Gary Shandling Senator Stern is enough for me. Okay. And speaking I of understand. Gary Shandling, by the way, I was watching an episode of the old Larry Sanders show last night because it's so brilliant. And uh, it's the one where Dana Carvey does an impression of Gary, uh -huh. of you know, of Larry Sanders. And Larry Sanders can't believe that uh, he really looks that way and he hates the impression, but he's afraid to tell him that he hates right. the impression. That's it. That's an example of life watching art, <laughs> appreciating it, because that's exactly how he would be when he if he sees a Howard Stern imitator. I'm pissed. I don't really do that. You know, like he claims he was really, uh, t you know, amazed when that Matthew friend does the impression. But, you know, it probably pisses him off. Oh, yeah, it definitely does. And listen to this. He already named a character in his whatever after you, Senator Stern. Mm -hmm. what, what is enough? He clearly appreciates you. It's never enough. Just isn't enough. Because then it'll look like a dickhead. That show was so brilliant. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know? And uh, and using, uh, you know, uh, Gary Shandling as Senator Stern was a good idea. I thought he did a good job. Yes, he did. He's a wonderful guy, too. And by the way, there's a big article in GQ magazine, uh, an interview with Gary Shandling, and it's really good. Oh, yeah? If you're a fan <laughs> of, you know, Larry. Was it as good as your interview, Howard? Well, why aren't you promoting your Gary Shanling interview? That no was kidding. so amazing. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus, the, that was something else. I show. wish he would be. I wish he would do more stuff. He's uh, every time he does something, I love it. Well, I could. I was. I was actually shocked that the guy has money because he, <laughs> this is my favorite thing. Uh, he could not go without shitting on him. I was shocked that the guy had money. He's solely focused on just dick, money, and me. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the thing. You can't go like he, he, what I think what he heard right now was like there was way too much praise being given to Gary Shandling, even by himself, that he decided not enough. Now I got to add some urine to the fucking cake mix. Yeah, he can't be that great. We got to knock him down a few pegs. <laughs> Better believe it. He's, you know, they, they said in the article, you know, Gary Shandling doesn't really need to do anything because he, of course, had his successful series, Larry Sanders show on HBO. And I'm like, are they fucking high? Right. Larry you Sanders, always say that HBO doesn't pay anything. HBO is as cheap as they come. <laughs> That's why we put the Springsteen interview on HBO. <laughs> 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 so if there's cheap, then clearly, you know, well, cheap knows cheap. Yep. Yep. Harry Shandling didn't make that kind of money where he could just stop working. Well, what it's, it's did he? Indicated. It's indicated. So where? That's, that's where the money is. Where is it it's, syndicated? It's, if you like, if uh, when I've worked up in Canada, I've seen it on on their networks over there. So you know, they they end up cutting that up with you. And then DVD, remember? Yeah, uh, but you know, it was a cult hit. I mean, it was huge. I, ITV used to show the Larry Sanders show and its Gary Shandling show um, on uh, the channel for a while. And every time, and if you're a own like creator slash uh, writer slash whatever, and then act, you own a piece of the show, uh, then it's it is bank as soon as you've syndicated it. Plus, a lot of people who worked in HBO, like in The Sopranos, said they made deals where they made all this money on the back end through the DVD sales. So like Favreau is saying, it's syndicated, one. And two, DVDs were huge. Box sets yeah. were everywhere and everybody bought them. I had so many myself, you know. Yeah. So Howard, again, just can't accept somebody's successful in making money. We have to we have to just keep it to this price point and we're never going to remove it. He, he doesn't make a lot of money, not as much as me, not as yeah. good.
Well, he, uh, it's it's unbelievable. Like you, he couldn't even let it go for the rest of the the conversation without shitting on him. And even when he gets the facts about the syndication and DVD sales, he's wholesale rejecting it. Yeah, of course. This ru- this ruins the narrative. Gary Shandling's the homeless bum. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, don't know how I mean, they didn't make that many episodes. Yeah, I, I I can't imagine he's got that kind of fuck you money. But he's not working. Where's he getting his money? What's he doing all day? Wait, Fillmore, who was the guy? Remember uh, the musician? He went to go with Beth to see the screening of his life story. He was unhealthy and he wasn't sure if he was dying in the front row. Um, they oh. went to go see the who was it that musician? And then he Joe, it wasn't Joe Walsh. No, Neil, it was no, Neil old, Young. Neil, Possibly Neil Young, and he was Neil like, Young. "I think he died when because he fell asleep uh, during his own movie screening." Oh, oh, David Crosby. Oh, that's right, David Crosby. Good, <laughs> thank you. Sorry, I, I was in the right I codger. Remember. I was right in the codger ballpark. I just got yeah, the you, wrong old shithead wrong. <laughs> you did, but I mean, you got it right. So, um, he was he was fixated on the money aspect of David Crosby that he could not let it go. He just yep. You know, to denigrated the guy's life. Yeah. He, it's, you know, it's all over marbles. It's equal to parts dick measuring and uh, what is it called? What, what do we call it? Um, no, not debasing. Well, debasing, I guess, in a way, but uh, uh, like Clout. not. No, well, no, like I'm looking at uh, another word that we used to use on the show for the NPD stuff. But either way, devaluing, devaluing the person yes. somehow in some way, because it's just. You've got to make yourself look better. So you got to, sh- you could either self aggrandize yourself, which he does plenty of, but you can also do both and shit on the other person you're, me- that's, you're meant to be compared with. But no one compared Gary Shandling to him. He was just talking, oh, how talented he is. <laughs> but he couldn't let that just go. He just can't have, he just can never let somebody have a beautiful life and a great narrative to their life and praise it the way it should be without giving it a good swift kick in the pants at some point. And it usually Rec- has to do with money. Recently with this two Leslie fiasco where it got, you know, it was came out obviously that there was some, you know, behind the scenes back padding and trying to a little like back scratching shit to try to get this film more nominations at the Oscars and stuff. And it comes out that he's one of the people that was, you know, wooed by the, you know, Mary McCormick's husband and stuff. If, if he, if he didn't have some kind of, uh, behind the scenes involvement with that film. That's something that if he had mentioned the film, he would have shit on it right away as well. And in the end, he does shit on it by saying, you know, uh, I should get, you know, uh, the credit for making that film what it was. Cause I was involved in this. He, he couldn't stop himself from putting himself above the project. He can claims is so good. Well, just even think about American Idol at the time when it was the most popular show on TV. He still Mm -hmm. injected himself during the Sanjaya thing and made it so American Idol's success was riding on his back. Right. And meanwhile, it's it's all like they they plan it well in advance. Like they and they know based on who they who they think. It's basically all market research. They do this. you, You think American Idol leaves things to chance? Fuck it. No. It was no. It was it was just as set up as when John's job was set up. I mean, fuck's sake! You think they just went? They were going to hope that you know Shuli was going to show some kind of brilliance to <laughs> that? Who came in last Shining place? Shining Shuli. <laughs> he came in last place. Gabby didn't even show up one day. He was so fucked up, <laughs> and he still finished ahead of Shuli. <laughs> uh, that's. We should go back through that one. That one's funny. Maybe some parts of it. Uh, no divorces. Uh, let's not forget that. <laughs> sure. John, what does he do all day? Like, according to the article, he likes to play basketball and. Yeah, he's got a game that I have. Uh, I have yet to. Uh, I'm not a basketball player, but he has a game uh, every Sunday. Is he, he boxes, bored? Actually, he boxes. He's he very boxes. overweight. No, he's actually <laughs> not. He just, you know. He's actually no. Why? Because he doesn't look like a Skeletor. So everybody who's not, you know, looking like they have an eating disorder for Howard is overweight. That's just how it is. Gary Shandling had always had a puffy face. I used to think there was some, like, uh, what do you call it? Like some allergies or something. He, but that was just his look. He always had a puffy face or like a really, you know, almost he Asian. Me of dro- <laughs> like droopy. You know the yeah. dog droopy. He yeah. has that. That's just how his facial structure is. And but I never thought of Gary Shandling as an overweight guy. 
No, God, he was always he and he was always kind of stocky, like always he was never a stick insect. Yeah. He, was, he was always fairly, you know, and he never looked overweight. Certainly when he got really old, um, you, his eyes started to kind of squint yeah. more. But that was always kind of his look anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So. But, yeah well, got, well, we we got to keep shitting on him. He plays yep. basketball and boxes. I see he's overweight. Right. He's a fat pig. How can he play basketball? He, he's, he's actually in pretty good shape between all the basketball and that. And, he looked uh, heavy to you know, me in the movie. He's got a he, he's got a nice house up there in the hills and uh you know he's and he's actually quite involved with a lot of other people's stuff behind the scenes he works with like Judd Apatow with I know he's friends with Sean Penn there's a lot of you know if somebody that makes a movie he's a very uh, generous guy he'll come over he'll watch it he'll he'll come in the editing room and give notes but does he get paid jokes. for that. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he's just, he's just a, what an asshole! Why would you get paid? Oh, why would you? Why would you expand and network and help your friends out who might put you in a movie or, you know, why do that? Why not just sit in your house collecting marbles and shit on everyone else in the did business? You, did you ever ever see the uh, the uh, the documentary about Gary Chandling? I found it actually kind of fascinating, but it was definitely one sided. I didn't. Yeah, it's it's worth a it's worth a watch, um, even if you're not a fan. Because, uh, but in it, like I'm certainly not a fan of Apatow either. But because on on other the other side of the aisle, I heard hor horrific stuff about Gary Shanley and the way he treated uh, his agents, the way he treated um, you know writers that all went on to do amazing projects. You know, in terms of sitcom writing, like he fired. The guy that created Just Shoot Me, he fired uh, the guy who created, um, what was it called, uh, Home Improvement, not Home Improvement, uh, Will and Grace, things like this. I I believe, I, I'm not I'm not 100% sure, but almost everybody he got rid of went on to create other shows that became very successful. I don't like when I hear about celebrities treating people who aren't of note or famous poorly, you know, Ellen sort of stories. So that's a miss. Like, I would shit on Gary for that. But Howard's picking just such surface level bullshit. Tri trivial, trivial nonsense. Yeah. But bottom line is Gary was always a little unhappy about life in general himself. So in a lot of ways, he was like Wiggy. Maybe that's partly what Wiggy's bitching about. Like he's not. It's just a status thing. But maybe he sees a bit of himself in him as well. I don't know. Anyway, the creative guy. He's a he's a mentor. He's a great, he's a great dude. He's a mentor. He really is. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Something wrong with him. <laughs> but he is a brilliant guy. What? Something wrong. Honestly. He, uh, Robin is even what you, are you talking about? Do you know what I think it really is? It just occurred to me. He wanted to play Senator Stern in the fucking movie. And he's pissed maybe. off that Gary Shandling was in that film instead of him. But it also maybe is Fillmore when he's hearing about how much John knows about him and all these other people involved. And we go do this. We play basketball. He edits movies for this person or that person. It kind of shows Wiggy a click. That he isn't in. Yeah, it's and that's jealousy. another it's another reason why he's changed his show so much because he wanted to be in that clique so badly. So this is this is even though I think Favreau's just answering honestly, this mm -hmm. is Howard's insecure mean girl coming out. Yes, why aren't absolutely. I invited to the sleepover? Yep. hundred percent wrong with him. Yeah, why is know. there something wrong with him? I don't know. He should be doing something. Oh, you're going to quit, but you... Yeah, but I've already... <laughs> I've, I've accomplished what I needed to accomplish. He hasn't. Oh, he hasn't. There's still more in him. Larry Sanders wasn't his... Larry Sanders was the greatest show ever. All right, so he did it. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know, man. But anyway, listen, John, I didn't bring this up on the air because I really want something from you. I don't want anything from you. Yes. Except your friendship. Okay. But look in the mail. No, and, uh, I don't want anything from the mail. I'm just saying the 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 thing you sent me seemed more like a promotional item for Iron it. Man. Understood. My bad. If I were Favreau, I would send him a toy every week just to piss him off. I would send him every piece of merch that came out just to be an asshole. I would send him boxes of dog shit. <laughs> I mean, honestly, you know, you, this is, you know, I, I think I told you that story. I think I told you that story about my grandmother and, and she had like a, a friend in the village who when she died, like her, all of her kids were fighting before she died. They were all fighting like who's going to get the chest, the big like armoire or something in her, that they had that was locked and they didn't know what was in it. And um, what ended up happening when she died, she filled it up with horse shit. And she said, I want you to all split this evenly in the will. That is so 
fucking funny. Because she I knew, because think... she, because she knew they were shits. They were being little dicks. These kids. Yeah, send him like do the Happy Gilmore thing, flaming bags of dog shit on his porch every night. Yeah, uh, <laughs> or the Billy Madison. I'm sorry, Billy Madison. Wrong, wrong Adam Sandler reference. That's all right. You that's you now we're in, because we can we can fix this in post. You, you, we don't we'll leave it in, but we're not, that's how you know on the fly we are. <laughs> Give me one sec. Uh, listen, we also <laughs> sent you the uh, the trailer for uh, that we played at Comic Con for Cowboys and Aliens. So, uh, oh, oh yeah, I'm dying to see that. Yeah, well, that that should have been there. Maybe it was the week you were off. Check. I would go through my staff's desk over there, to make sure that guys see if there's to... a trailer for Cowboys and Aliens. I'd like to see that. Yeah. All right. Uh, Universal said they sent it over, so let me. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll keep listening, and if if it didn't make it your way, I'll I'll. Uh, All right, John. Some phone calls. All right, Thanks, John. Good morning. Bye. Take care. Bye. I really wasn't fishing for a gift. I I just thought it was funny that. <laughs> he sent me some promotional item that, like, oh. you know, anyone, you, any. <laughs> so the narrative just changed in a matter of minutes. He wasn't fishing for a gift yet. In the beginning, he wanted a breastplate and a helmet. Well, George Takei suggested the breastplate. But, yes, he definitely wanted something from the film, clearly. Yeah, he but, wanted but he, but he a lock of memory. Robert Downey Jr.'s hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, DNA. He didn't want, but he, yeah, he didn't want, you know. It's just some shit from the uh, from the gift store. A person can have. <laughs> right. He, Sorry. He wanted all, any worn boxers left over in his trailer. Right. The more sniff. the more grit, the better, according to oh. him. Gr grit. Hey, Jason, you want that? It's yours. You can have the Iron Man. It I was is a nice collectible. I was going to display it. Would love it. I was going to display it in my apartment, and then I thought that's kind of weird. What do I have to do with Iron Man, really? Like I have, I have my mom. What do you have to do with guitars? We have shitloads of them in the bowling alley. Yeah, what? And, uh, all of the <laughs> shit the, that he I'm has, it's all poser. Teacher. It's it is all poser. poser shit. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. It's. I look like a human. This is my human household, <laughs> but none of it breathes reality. <laughs> I'm a real boy. I'm a real boy. See, look at my real stuff. And I know you spelt that in your mind. B O I. Yes, I did. Like skater yeah. boy. Skater boy. Yeah. <laughs> Marvel comics on display. Some some of them on my mm -hmm. wall. Mm -hmm. But you want that? Yeah, I mean that's really nice of you. All right. My wife will probably kill me. You can have it. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Seriously, thank yeah, you. You can have it. I appreciate it. All right. You're welcome. He wants it so bad that it makes me think I should want it. You know what I mean? Like I, I said. Yeah, maybe there is something to this. Like I was going to take it home and display it. <laughs> oh, there. Are Jason made a mistake. Don't ever take anything that's supposed to be his because it's going to come back to you in some way. He's going to be thinking about it. I gave Jason that mannequin or maquette, whatever. Sorry, I keep calling it a mannequin. That other word is just so weird. It's like baguette, yeah. but M. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he should. He should. Do you think Jason should have either not accepted it or should he said, eh, I'll take it off your hands if you want, I guess. I would have said something like, are you sure, man, or just something? Because anything Wiggy gives to people, it always ends up biting them in the fucking ass. Whether it comes it be with strings saying, big time. Sure, Artie, you can do the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love Artie getting so indignant about the Neil Young poster, the little lithograph yes. that he gave him. That's worth yes. like thousands of dollars now, especially since uh, Hirschfeld died. And, um, you know, art, especially art, like sketches. My best friend, his um, his parents own some Dolly uh, sketches and that they have on their wall. That oh, must wow. be they must be worth, I don't know, in probably at least 15, 20,000 because they're legit. Wow. Yeah. And they got them at a time. Of course, Dolly was still alive. He died, I think, 89. I can't remember exactly. But um, I remember seeing them as a kid because I was a huge Salvador Dolly fan and going like, fuck, <laughs> you know, that's so you, crazy. You, you don't get these by accident. You know, although there is a great story. I don't know if I told you Mickey Rooney put up Salvador Dali when he was in his Hollywood heyday. Like he put, he put him up like in the fifties and in broken English, uh, as he was leaving over the weekend, Salvador Dali told him, Miki, you have been such a great, uh, how you say host. Uh, I'm sorry. I have no money to, you know, pay for my stay, but here are two paintings. He didn't know it was Dali. <laughs> he gave him away. Oh. Because <laughs> no he said I, one, one of them was like melting clocks and stuff. And I don't know if it was the iconic ones, but he says, in my ignorance, I gave them away. A friend of mine was loved art. So he took them.
It reminds me of like parents, uh, p- people I know who are older, who they have like rookie baseball cards and their mothers don't give a fuck and just cleaned out their baseball cards when they yeah. moved out of the house. And oh, you oh, could cry. You could you cry. Could cry. Uh, yeah, like like re- before he passed away, Burt Reynolds auctioned off pretty much everything in his house. I'm sure it was because of money trouble. He will tell you no, but he tr- sold off like the 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 Trans Am from uh, Smokey and the Bandit, a lot of art, a lot of American art, and um, it was and pr- pretty amazing stuff actually. If you were if you're into collecting that kind of stuff. Well, Lonnie Anderson didn't help him. <laughs> no, no, she did not. Thousands of people that would love to have it. I mean, no. that's why they make them. You know, there's a a real community of collectors. Yeah. I think they're kind of retarded. I collect birthdays. <laughs> Good I think for it's, you. I think it's kind of. That's the most valuable thing to collect. <laughs> it is a little pathetic, isn't it? Uh, I mean, well, between us. birthdays? No, collecting the fucking Iron Man. Uh, if that's your thing. I yeah. mean, people love, you know, they have a passion for whatever they have a passion for. Star no. Trek. I don't Iron know. Man, Dick. I don't what, know if I should. What is bad? I mean, he collects North Shore Animal League calendars and sends those to people. You're not embarrassed about that? That people now in their homes have collections of that fucking BIM for decades? <laughs> he's collecting cats. <laughs> I know. One eyed cats. <laughs> One eyed cats. Yeah, he's collecting oh, eyes. Cats. No kidding. They've like displayed that. I'm, you know, like I have a closet where I have like these shelves that are uh-huh. kind of barren and I put things up on the shelves. I was going to maybe put the Iron Man up on there, but mm-hmm. I thought, you know. It's your taste, you know. Mm-hmm. It's your habitat. I know. It's uh, got to say you. I don't know if it said me. <laughs> I'm not Iron Man. <laughs> All right, Jason, I want it back. <laughs> the way he's overthinking this makes me definitely think there's something else going on. Like, what does it? What is? What is bothering him about this? Because it's so stupid. But this is lasting for so long and he Mm -hmm. seems so bitter and upset about it. I'm wondering one is, yeah, is it because he's not in the click of all of this or it's not special enough? But why is he so fucking bothered by this? Yeah, put it in your closet. Who cares? Yeah, put it in your closet along with yourself. Um, The thing is, (laughs) (laughs) the the thing is also he said he mentioned he just just (laughs) offhandedly said, I have some barren shelves. You have a lifetime a lifetime on the radio, meeting all these people. Um, even Jackie has signed notes that he passed to Howard. He had he had celebs. He made sure that he wanted to get them to sign it, like Roger Daltrey and Rodney Dangerfield, all these people, like whoever it was. And um, I think I think it's kind of cool, actually. I, I I have no problem. Like if they, I know some people would think it's frivolous just because someone's famous, you get their signature. Who cares? But. I I think if you're into collecting things, there are, you know, dumber things to collect. Yeah, Jim Norton does that. He always takes pictures. He takes pictures with celebrities that he Mm -hmm. loves, Mm -hmm. and then he displays them in his house. Some of them are signed, a lot of concert posters, concert T-shirts, things like that. You know, it's not stupid. No, especially if it has an intrinsic value that you think you can make money off later. Sometimes it's an investment more than just a memory. Sometimes it's both. But even if it was not an Iron Man figure, what does Howard collect? Even the thing that he said he collected, like Mad Magazines, he made yeah. fun of it. So there really is no, there is nothing that he really does care about except for something that he thinks is coveted by yes. other people. Yes. Do other people want it? That's the, that's just the basis. That's like, it. Who I else wants care. this? Yes. Yes. Yeah. How how valuable is this to other people? To me, it has no value at all because I don't care about anything. I'm not human. I don't have feelings. But is this sought after? Like, is it the Marilyn Monroe dress from Some Like It Hot? Or sorry, the Seven Year Itch, rather. Is it the uh, Elvis, you know, guitar from the old, you know, the Grand Old Opry days? Was it, um, is it, you know, Buddy Holly's glasses from his crash in Clear Lake, Iowa? But that's also why I think he and Beth, who are only two people, had to build the most ridiculous mansions in Palm Beach and Hamptons that are airport hangers, according to Alec Baldwin, because that's something that he thought would be coveted by other celebrities. I have the biggest property in these exclusive zip codes. Yeah, Well, isn't it a sad thing like when you have a house and you don't have enough stuff to uh, fill up what you think needs? Like, you know, you don't have photos you can put anywhere. You've got empty space. I'm not talking about, okay, you're just moving in and you're sorting out your years somewhere and you don't have it already decorated. 
all you have is pictures of beef on every wall <laughs> Life and yourself, size. And yourself oh. full portrait, and yeah. cats, yourself yeah. and cats. Yes. Um, the next one, guys, uh, is from August thirty first, same year. King Baby receives his Baba. It's a short clip, so here we go. Speaking of uh, that's John Favreau's in the movie, so I he I yelled at him because he was telling me how supportive I was of Iron Man and supportive of his career, and he really appreciated it. And he sends me some shitty toy that they sell in the store of Iron Man, yeah, which I quickly gave to Jason, who was very happy to get. And then John was listening, and he called in. And he said, "Oh man, I can't believe I'm getting yelled at for son sending you something nice, I giving you a gift." And I explained. I said, "You don't have to send me any gift, but if you're going to send me something, send me something from the actual fucking movie, right? Some memorabilia that would really." Mm. Uh, yeah, don't, me something. don't give me some shit I could go buy in a store. So it must have worked. I got a note from him today. Howard encloses a real Iron Man helmet, handmade by Legacy Effects, formerly Stan Winston Studios. Now, is this, again, this is vague. Was this used in the movie? Where is it? Have, have I don't you know. got it? As well as the actual Senator Stern nameplate used in the movie. Now, that's valuable. That's okay. All right. That, who knows if it's valuable, but it's definitely a movie prop. But see how he needed to have it where I, nobody else has it. I mm -hmm. want I want this coveted movie thing that nobody else has. It's all mm -hmm. about status. It's never about personal caring, nothing. Wouldn't you be amazed? Wouldn't you be just thrilled to have something from a movie you love? Like you loved you. You saw all the Harry Potter things. I know you, you oh enjoyed God. them with if you got like, I don't know, someone's wand that was used in I, the scene, you would probably frame it. You probably put it in glass somewhere. If I even if, you know, Mia came home from Universal Studios and got me like a stupid keychain from there. I loved it. I was so excited, you know, because mm -hmm. it's from the Harry Potter Universal Studios gift shop. I don't right. care. You know, it's right. just fun and cute. I I think that it's so stupid. It, oh, did it come from the movie set? I mean, who cares? There Nobody things... else. really. You know, how many people have this helmet? Well, when the Montreal Forum was uh, it converted into like a shopping center or something, a lot of the seats, a lot of the, uh, the the seats in the arena got sold on eBay for like, you know, hundreds and thousands of dollars, you know, and uh, those are things. And they had signatures on them. They had like Hall of Famers on them. Sports people would know that stuff. That's a piece of the build, a piece of history there. They would absolutely go apeshit if they were able to own that. I'd love to as my, you know, knowing that it looks it would look ugly and out of place everywhere in the house, you get a man cave it looks fine there yeah a lot of people do that for you know torn down baseball uh stadiums and Big time. they even they'll take rocks from yeah. there like this was in <laughs> they're that crazy yeah. a piece of Just the turf have a piece of it yeah yeah absolutely or nets let's say like it was a, it was a mm -hmm. you know a hockey net or something like that piece of uh, a piece of material or a puck that was used in such and such a game it's it's loads of stuff Oh, my Jerseys. God. If it, we're getting a new stadium for the Bills. Um, It's moving across the street like a state of the art stadium. And because the other one's so old and falling apart. Yeah. And it's so bad. But they if this one goes, I don't know how they tear that down, but I will be there to go try to get whatever I can from that old well, stadium. For would they sure. auction off? Would they auction off stuff? Because I that's don't know. Somehow, I was that's, thinking that's what... more like crime. <laughs> just break in and steal things no, no but, but i'm saying do you think they would like for the sake of you know just offsetting the oh cost of yeah the i'm yeah. sure they would i'm sure because yeah. people in this town are nuts yeah <laughs> yeah jesus that i like because i don't think the other thing was actually from the movie it was made by the people who made the movie so. like if this is uh, the iron man helmet that appeared in the movie i might actually put this in a glass case right i hope these props are more befitting your collection these this is a prop signed john favreau let me see that well, there's the there's the head but that looks like that don't look like from the movie is it <laughs> oh, oh whoa it's heavy it no i almost broke it oh god i think this might you know what i think this is yeah look i'm gonna but who's head oh, here's the, the uh nameplate yeah, Senator Stern. Oh, no, that's cool. See, that's got some, right? That's yeah. cool. Yeah. So wrap that up, Baba Booey, right. immediately. And don't let Jason touch it. <laughs> <laughs> certainly don't let Ralph see it. <laughs> uh, now, Robin, this looks like an authentic Iron Man head. Like, it looks like it's been used a lot. It's like yeah. all chipped and everything. Uh, oh, that's cool, then. Yeah, that's cool. Gary, somehow delicately asked John Favreau if this is actually from the movie. <laughs> If it was oh, used, it's just, he's it's on, on camera. On is it on film. cam? 
as Eric the Midget would say. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking the lingo of the la of the biz. I guess I browbeat him into uh, giving me something good. <laughs> This is so selfish and so, and, and it's still not good enough. John Favreau even put Nick's in the fucking thing, and it's not good enough. I hope John Favreau, like whoever he had send that, he had people like wiping their ass with their fucking bare hands and touching it and making sure there's right. all kinds of germs. Because honestly, I know as disgusting as that is, guys, like this is something. Um, I think I posted I, when I said I was looking for all these clips and, and some people were very keen to help out. And uh, I, I praise them to the stars the um, to supply me with one clip that I was missing. And. I remember thinking if Favreau ever had a chance to do Iron Man 3, I would have changed the character to fucking Senator Imus. Oh, that would have, that is so smart. Just to fuck yeah. with him. I, you know what? I would have treated the helmet like that scene in Waiting, the movie where they just scrock in the people's food before they put it out because they were <laughs> complaining. That's what that's what he should have done with this fucking helmet. <laughs> shot a load shot a load in that piece of it and then when he brings it down it just comes pouring into his eyes one thing i learned years ago do not complain in a restaurant about the food and if you do don't expect to ever go back there and get something untouched by you know oh, the, the lower part of the anatomy um it's just okay. it's just unfortunately the way things go the next clip guys is from uh september 2nd 2010 and this is the main long rant against favreau's gift so here we go anyway so i'm having a meeting with uh, tim uh -huh. and i'm so goddamn proud in my office now i got that iron man head and this Senator Stern sign that John Favreau sent over, the director of Iron Man. Yes, it's all mounted and beautiful, yeah. right? So, My you know, God, unbelievable. This is so weird to bring up, but fuck it, I don't care. You're going to think I'm a terrible person, but I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I do care, but I don't. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, I, I was on the air, I, and John Favreau said to me originally, you know, I want to thank you because you backed me on Iron Man, you know, and you know, you've been really good to me in my career. You tell people I'm a good director and all this. He says, I want to send you a gift. Iron Man gift. I said, that's very sweet of you. Not necessary. Uh, very nice. But he was very sincere. He was like, you know, I, I really, I love how you are you know you, you've been so good sure it's been okay. great i want you to have something yeah, even said i backed john favreau in his career now i could see if this was the 90s and he's on terrestrial radio he doesn't have the reach that he does if he backs him or not it's whether people like a movie that's how mm -hmm. they find out about the person if howard stern says it's good nobody's gonna think well i better go watch this movie it was successful yep. because it's fucking iron man and it was awesome yeah and and people yeah it was it was a great movie first and then and yeah. everything from the casting the writing the the effects everything was was tip top and robert downey jr by the way who i know he's been in his share of stinkers over the years but certain performances of his that are just outstanding and i'm thinking of chaplin obviously which is not a great film but a great performance um one night stand the mike figgis film which was again horrible but he was great in it um this, two, they also two girls and a guy they were going to see Robert Downey Jr. too because people love a comeback. Oh, they do. And he had it, you know, he was, you know, it's amazing kind of the turnaround. The U.S. Marshals, you know, Wesley Snipes, he credits Wesley Snipes and Tommy Lee Jones for really helping him out in the business when he was, he couldn't get arrested. He did that Jodie Foster film, Home for the Holidays, and she, and she went to his trailer and said, look, I'm not worried about the performance you're doing in this, you're giving in this film. You're doing a fantastic job. I'm worried about you getting employed in the future with this drug habit. Because she could tell, she knew he was on the shit, and she, like, she reached out to him, basically. And the director doesn't have to do that. They could fire you from the fucking film if you're doing drugs and stuff. People appreciated his talent, and they reciprocated, and that's why he got the money he got for Iron Man. It was for all yeah. those shitty work all the great work he did in the past and he was kind of coasting on him either way it's an amazing thing for a director who doesn't have the super clout that you know anybody does in nobody in marvel has any fucking clout over disney now um they just fire directors for the fun of it and he still and then he went on to make the film chef which was fantastic it was a really mm -hmm. good film we discussed this yes and john favreau sounds like a legit fan and this is how he treats him 
I know it's making me so angry. It's like, this is what you get when you develop a friendship with Stern. Yes. Nothing good can come of it. Nothing. None. You know, everyone thought Robert Downey Jr. would be a bad choice. You know, everyone was down on the project. You couldn't wait for it. And then you promoted it and everything else. So without any prompting from me, he sends me a originally a toy that any idiot can buy in a toy store is a toy of Iron Man. I'm not four years old. I look at this thing. I, I'll be honest with you. I was like, well, why would you send me that? I mean, I'm a guy in radio. I, you know, I, I've got a pretty powerful position. If you really want to oh. reward me. You're not in radio anymore, it, shithead, by the way. I want to be rewarded. I'm, I'm a, I, I, in my own head, am a, so amazing. The gift should match how I feel about myself. And yes. it should reflect the stature of somebody that's as important as Gary Shandling. This is what he's trying to say. And yep. it's incredible because all friendships that he has in Hollywood end up flaming out because of this expectation he has of them, including Jimmy Kimmel, Jennifer mm -hmm. Aniston, Justin Thoreau, or uh, what was it? Uh, John Stamos, too, where it's like, I expect more than I give any of you. I, right. I, me existing is the gift. He thinks. Well, well, OK, so the birthday bash, let's use that as an example, like a litmus test. He invited people who he believed were hot and that could push him ahead in the business. Harvey Weinstein, Lena, Lena Dunham. Dunham, like these people that you would never in a million years have in your home much. And this is before no. all the shit came out. Harvey was, Harvey Weinstein was a disgusting pig. Um, and he was notorious but long before fucking Me Too that he was, you know, Bradley just a, a Cooper, complete shithead. Ryan, Bradley Cooper. Ryan, um, Ryan Philippe, who's like yeah. just an abusive drunk. And so, allegedly. And um, I think that it, with him... It, if the person is still at a status where he needs something from them, he'll toe the line and he'll allow himself to be treated as less than. But as soon as that person has their Me Too moment or canceled moment, he will fucking shit on them and it all comes pouring out. Like when Wendy Williams, uh, the whole Wendy Williams saga that we're covering, um, he – he believed like he, I don't think he believed he at that. That was an, a rare example of someone who was still in the business, still working, still having had a form of her own. And he decided this has to come out. This this I rant to, has I to have come to out. Knock, and I think it's too. It's these people who he thinks. It's like he wants to knock John Favreau down for some reason. But I yes. I don't understand why it's it. Is it just. Is it because he's succeeding and it's somebody that looked up to him and now he's surpassing him? I don't I know. I think so. Well, let's, that, let's look. That was Wendy Williams, too. Remember, she was a fan of the Howard Stern show, just like Favreau. And then guess what? She surpa surpassed him in popularity and she had a show for over a decade. Mm -hmm. And he's still looking for that elusive regular TV gig, which, you know, even when AEGT that uh, yeah, AGT, he flamed out of that. And it Even wasn't Jimmy Kimmel, you know, Jimmy Kimmel is more successful than you for a bunch of years when he got the late night gig. OK, and now and, hosting the Oscars and stuff and which hosting is, the Oscars and yeah. having friend parties all the time in L.A. with all these people and pictured with them everywhere. So Big you could time. see this seed of jealousy starting to develop. And mm -hmm. that's why he always had to have these parties thrown in his honor. So it's like, don't forget to pay your dues for me existing and being your friend you still have to pretend that i'm more famous than you and he also you know he, he would say that in his honor but i don't i believe he was just invited and and kimmel allows him to say that without coming back at him say you just happen to be invited to one of my parties you're not special i, I throw parties every weekend it's yeah. la right i the barbecue is constantly on yeah i'm always yeah. catering yeah. And the other the other thing, <laughs> the other thing is um, you've got this this fucking wigged asshole. It, it's it's eight years later, I believe, I think eight or seven years later, maybe. And Richard gets that extra part in Grand Guardians of the Galaxy, which we'll cover yep. with some I'll cover with someone, somebody. And it's just an extra part in a massive, massive successful mm -hmm. film, but still just a bit part. It's a fun thing for Richard. He's a fan of these films and it's just something to give him a little bit of pleasure when his work clearly, clearly doesn't give him any. And then he's going to shit all over him for 20, 30 minutes on the show, different days because he doesn't want Richard to get ahead. He doesn't want this to springboard into other opportunities and he's not in that thing himself. 
How does Richard get in, but I don't get a part? How does how does Ronnie get in a Sandler flick? Bingo. That yeah, we'll be, drove we'll him be covering up that one a too. wall. Yeah, we'll be getting. Why does Bowie get a book deal? Right. Yeah, all these things. With something, wouldn't you send me something that they used as a prop in the movie or something? Something important. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a memorabilia collector, but I would appreciate something. Like that. I don't appreciate some shitty. To- I can go buy that toy in the toy store. He goes, no, 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 it's uh, collectible. Uh, I go, stop it. <laughs> you know, and, and believe me, I wasn't fishing for anything. I really wasn't. Well, I heard you. It sounded like you were fishing. Well, I didn't mean to be fishing. <laughs> if I was fishing, I would thank you, Robin. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, Fun. it's so obvious that even Robin can't go along with this narrative. No, he's not fishing. <laughs> And I saw that the thing sells for like a couple hundred dollars in a toy store. And, and it was, OK, fine. So I so I gave it to Jason, you know, I wonder what he did with it. He likes it. I know. But, uh, yeah. you know, I know what you did with your stuff. I wonder what Jason says. It's on display in his house. Yeah. OK, great. He's got a toy <laughs> in on his, his office. Yeah, in his office, in his <laughs> shitty office. What's he doing in an office? <laughs> we know what Jason's office looks like. In 2010, it's a fucking call center cubicle uh, along with about 20 other people, including interns. I his know. Shitty it, office. It, it is a really, shitty office. It really does look like, you know, some offshore job that got for like some call center customer service in India. Yeah, yeah in Goa. <laughs> absolutely. My name is my name is Randy. How can I help you? I'm sure your name is Randy, but thank you for helping. <laughs> Seriously, but that is how small, cluttered, and compact that huge man was in office. Yeah, yeah big time. <laughs> so um, anyway, I, I, uh, you know, I didn't say anything. And Favreau called in and he said, "Listen, what uh, do you mean you didn't say anything? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I didn't." <laughs> <laughs> Even Robin knows. <laughs> you got on the air and said, you sent me a toy. Yeah, I was upset. Yeah. <laughs> because it, because to me, like, if somebody really mattered to me, you know, an important guy in the media who's spreading the word to millions of people that his movie is good. Right. You know, for millions of people. Your job is to promote things for other people. In a sense, I mean, if you're having this guy on your show and talking about a movie he's doing, what else are you going to talk about? That's what he does for a living. I don't recall that Favreau went on Stern at the time, like a 2008. I'd have to look back, but and I wasn't was going to play that. Was it a call? That, it would have been a call in because I don't think Favreau ever showed up in person. He lives on the West Coast anyway. It would make very little sense if he was in New York for even a press junket for, for this. Because first of all, Down, Robert Downey Jr. would, the director might, but most of the times it's the stars, the actors that are the draw. So they do the work. But it's also, it was one of the most popular movies. So just in general, Howard would be discussing it because this is what was happening in pop culture. And that's your show. Absolutely. Yeah. And him being a quote unquote comic book fan. Bullshit. He's a, he's a comic book fan the way he's a fucking music fan. He doesn't know dick about either. And so, so him now shitting all over Favreau, it's like once he's had time to marinate more in this, he only gets worse. So I can I only imagine behind the scenes how bad it gets and him talking to other people about it who have nothing vested in this and want to tune him the fuck out like bad, like Beth. I'm not surprised she goes through a bottle or a couple bottles a night. It kind of reminds me of when he was so deranged about Imus for so mm-hmm. long. Mm-hmm. You could just see the screws starting to turn and it's become psychosis. It's just and, nuts. Yes. And the steam coming off of the wig. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Free. Yeah. I don't have to do that. It's send. You just can't send a toy. <laughs> send nothing. That, 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 that's all I'm saying. It's better to send nothing. So, Favreau calls in on the air. You guys heard it, and he, and he said, "Listen, uh, I know what I need to send you. I know what I need to send you. I need to send you. I know what to do. You just just leave it up to me. I'm going to make it up to you." I said, "John, don't make it up to me. Stop it. No, no, no. I know what I need to do." So I get a box in the mail two days ago. And I open it up, and it's this Iron Man head. And I forget exactly how he worded it, but he said... It was made by the company that made all the props. Industri- it's made by Industrial Light Magic or uh, something. I don't know what the company name yeah, is. Some one of those big companies yeah. that we always read about, and God knows what they do, but yeah. it was made by the company, and while... 
was very vague. Yeah, it didn't actually say this was from the movie, this sat on the set, this place or that place. Right. It just said. Okay, so Robin knows so much about this, he's clearly been bitching about it to her privately. And so the company who makes the costumes for the movie for the made movie. you a replica or whatever. I mean, nobody else is getting that. Nobody can call that company and say, hey, can you replicate the Iron Man helmet for me in your spare mm. fucking time? This is the thing. Like if Lucas films or Lucas, uh, I think I, I think there's any number of companies that do it. But Lucas, when he was making Star Wars, decided I'm going to send a, a custom made helmet to so and so. And it comes straight from the people who make it for the film. It's the same as if it was in the film. It's there's no difference. There's no discernible difference. The only difference is you can't guarantee it was on the screen. Well, OK, big deal. But it's still something the average public, as you said, can't get. Replicas that they sell, even for a lot of money in these toy stores, as good as they are, they are not from the source. Right. And is this is what do you want? His DNA on the helmet? It's so he crazy. Does. He wants like blood. He wants like stains on it, like jizz stains or some shit. Oh, uh, it's just, just he wants craft services like ketchup I, on the on the hands or something, you know. I just can't picture any person at this time listening to this and thinking this sounds rational and very understandable <laughs> or entertaining for that matter like right. him bitching about like like an entitled asshole bitching about how a gift from a fucking director who directed something that made a million like a billion dollars and he's sending yeah. you something like wah, wah, we got to feel bad for you howard let's complain to a car to the you know hardworking middle class people driving to work about a multimillionaire being pissed off about two free gifts that neither of us would ever get. That, right. you know, it's just like, this is so not relatable whatsoever. That's like a celebrity complaining that they don't like their glom box from the fucking Tonys or something. This is Wayne Siegel sending him a fucking Mercedes free for a plug and him complaining that it wasn't the right color. I know. It's you know? so gross. It is gross. Yeah. And so when you talk about relatable, <laughs> like Jesus Christ. And even like, guys, you got to take away the the aspect of you're not into comics. You're not into this. You still have to understand that the sort of the, the genre and the fandom. You can do that without being fans of the thing to understand how valuable something is. Well, it's kind of like, OK, you know how these celebrities all have skincare lines or makeup lines in order for them to get promoted. They send other celebrities their products. Mm -hmm. That's like Selena Gomez getting something from Kylie Jenner. And she's pissed that Kylie didn't purpose per, per, her own person package the fucking thing. Did right, you so, put and, the and makeup the in the box? Yeah. Yeah. Did you place this in the box personally? Then I'm not accepting it. I'm very upset that one of the workers at your factory packaged and sent this. You know, I it's still crazy. You know, I still have rolled up uh, Sil Sylvain, one of the guitarists for the New York Dolls. He was selling autographed posters years and years before he passed away. And I said, it's. I looked at it, it was like 50 bucks. I go, that's nothing. That's nothing. And he literally sent it from New York. He hand wrote everything. He rolled Aww. it up. He just went to the post office and sent it. I still haven't opened it because I want to, when I do open it, because I want someone professional to be able to put it up and frame it properly uh, because I was such a huge New York Dolls fan. And I'm thinking... And now it's way worth more because he passed away, obviously, and he's not going to see any of those, any more of those things. But I, I was so touched that it actually came from him. I was and I'm yeah. blown away, you know, is an is an icon, you know, not rich, but an icon. Um, but anyway. John Favreau did write a handwritten note. He did yeah. do things yes. personally. No, it's not coming off the head right from set. Never Jesus. enough. Never enough. It was made by the same company. Yes, but but in other words, it's a true collectible. So I was like really excited about it because I knew it was like probably five people in the whole world probably have one of these. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? It was very vague, his letter, but it seemed like it was an important thing. Right. So I wrote him this a thank you note like you wouldn't believe, you know. <laughs> well, we don't uh, believe it. <laughs> him and his thank you notes. He acts yeah. like this is such a touching yeah. thing to do. And it is in some way, but. This is bare minimum. Right. He think he thinks his thank you note is worth more than the gift when he sends it. Yes, he does. It's an autograph. Yes, I sent you a personal autograph. Not everybody gets that. It's like his paintings. Yeah, it's like a Picasso. Picasso used as a joke. Um, he would um, 
he would say that his when he would write a check for someone, uh, it, people a lot of people wouldn't cash it because his signature was worth more than the dollar amount on the check. <laughs> oh my god! And he, he knew it. He said it was like a bullshit label, it was like a Gucci label. He knew it was bullshit. He didn't care. Oh my god! He, even Robin, you know, buy the lady a Birkin. Why are yeah. you drawing a picture of her fucking cat? Get the lady some Chanel. No for kidding. Fuck sake. Yeah. Uh, you know, gee, John, thank you. Please, I wasn't asking for anything, but this is really exciting. I have it displayed. I sent them a picture of the display. Here, John, I have a sponge painting I did for you. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, when kids don't have money, what do they do for Christmas? They draw you a picture. They paint you an ornament. You love it. You hang it up every year. Then if you throw he it is out. 25 and I get some <laughs> fucking drawing, you better... Bet your ass I'm looking at her sideways. That drawing better come attached to something better than this. I never laughed so hard as when you told me she, she, she you know, the, she drew some art and it was horrible. So of course, that's not getting hung up on the wall. I know. I mean, you got to be honest with kids sometimes. They get to a certain age where it's like, all right, she's actually a pretty good drawer. But still, I, I will accept art until you get a job. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> it's commerce over art in Sam's world, in Sam's household. <laughs> well, you never know. She could end up being a great sketch artist or something, and then that, yeah. Yeah, that's something. But the thing is, like aesthetically, it doesn't look but, good. And it, again, most kids. <laughs> Howard is Howard is a made up artist. He flaunts yeah. his art career and puts it in magazines that he has relationships with. Nobody really would buy this shit. And no, then he gives it pencil, his pencil, gifts. Pen, pencil crayons on some fucking, you know, fantastic four goddamn color by numbers thing. And he goes, uh, look at the art I gave you, the watercolors. Yeah, right. OK. Uh, uh, there's hey, nothing worse. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. But there's nothing worse when he was getting into painting and there was just endless conversations about technique and painting on the Stern Show for I don't even remember how long because I drew a blank. It was so traumatically oh. awful. I'm Listen. so glad that phase is almost done. Listen, 2012 ish, he gets into photography and oh. I'm, go I'm going to sift through some of that bullshit so I can tear it apart with someone who also does like, you know, graphic, maybe Len Young. He, I know he knows a little bit about uh, photography as well. There's a few people on the forum that would fascinate about it and it's so niche, but I'd love to hear his stupidity about it and just take it to shreds because you don't <laughs> have to be, road. you don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to be a professional photographer to know that something's shit. And then fucking airbrushing her arms and hands out. <laughs> I never saw anything like that fucking po that, that calendar. Never in my life. Never. It's so bad. And that licking uh, the licking the ice cream with Bianca on one side, like oh. the slot with that fucking massive slobbering tongue, like just gross. Uh, <laughs> the anyway. OCD, the OCD must have not clicked for that one. <laughs> no, he didn't. He didn't catch it that day. Like it's fucking norovirus. <laughs> he said, <laughs> I, "That's how I got OCD. <laughs> like you catch a cold." <laughs> <laughs> I got COVID. I got OCD, man. <laughs> Trump's you. <laughs> oh, man. And I showed Tim yesterday the display of the Iron Man ad. And Favreau wrote me back and he even said, you know, and and this thing, the eyes light up. I didn't even realize because I didn't take the plastic out, but you can you can plug it in and the eyes light up oh, on really? Iron Man's head. I'm all excited about it. So, and, you know, he even, when he sent me the letter, he clarified. And I'll send you what he wrote me. I mean, I'll tell you what he wrote me. The, na the, name the name plate was featured on camera. Okay. All right. The helmet was not worn in the film, but is in fact one of the few identical camera doubles made from the same molds and to the same specifications by the effects house. It is a prop, not a commercial piece. The magnetic neck piece allows it to be worn by the stunt performer. We added the lights for display purposes. There are only a few of these in existence, and it is truly a collectible. Oh. So essentially, it was a double for anything that was screen worn in case something happened to them. Because in all these films, if it's a car, uh, if it's a, you know, a piece of uh, like weaponry or something, they have to have doubles just in case something breaks, accidents, you know, uh, malfunctions, yeah, you whatever the fuck. Cosmetically, they got to match. Right. Plus, you don't want to be stuck shooting something that breaks and then, whoops, we don't have another one. We're done for the day. 
Right. So they can't guarantee this was. And if the thing does the original, the thing that's moved used in the movie doesn't break, then these don't get used. But they're the same thing as what gets put in the movie. But because it wasn't for special. sure in the movie, it is. It is. And he says not for commercial release. They're not for sale. It's never enough, Fillmore. No. It's just no. Okay. All right. So I got, you know, I said, okay. I said, I'm nice. I wanted to tell people it was in the movie, but okay. I, it's a double. What, it's a stand. Do you understand exactly? No, what I don't it is? understand. It's a double of the mold they used to make the thing that appeared in the movie, and they only made a few. You know, I'm like, like again, it's, again. Was this in the movie or not? No. <laughs> Bottom line, no. But it sounded important still, right? I, uh -huh. Or maybe I'm in denial. I just want to think I'm important. So I was just like, no one has this. So. Yeah, said, did you hear it? This is, this is a microcosm of the issue. I just want to feel important. This is yep. his goal every day. Serve me. Make yep. me feel important because I'm such an insecure narcissist. This is yep. all this is. And a child. He, he, it's funny. He said, I'm not four. You are. Mentally. You are. Emotionally. Intellectually. Every single way. Fucking hell. He, is, he really is an emotional toddler. It's my needs all day long. If I don't get what I want, I'm going to scream and cry about it. Right. When we when we did the cover, the Carson thing and he added that uh, Bushkin added that extra chapter, Mommy Dearest. And the uh, the uh, psychologist he um, he referenced, he's talked about King Babies, hence the term and said, like, they it's, they're not sociopaths necessarily because they have feelings. They just don't progress past the stage of a two year old. Hence King Baby. Yeah, this it yeah. really it describes him well. Yep. I was going to be jealous of this Ralph. Right. Uh -huh. I take a picture of my Iron Man head. And I email it to Ralph. Yes. Just without saying anything. You know, fuck you, asshole. <laughs> I've got the ultimate collectible. Uh -huh. I've got the thing straight from Favreau. Right. So this morning, um, Ralph emails me back. I guess he had done it overnight when I was asleep. And, um, you know, he was like, hey, welcome to the club. And I would say, ha, 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 you know, because right, he collects right. shit. Yeah. You know? Meanwhile, he's so jealous because I have the Iron Man head. That was the double <laughs> and then this and then that. And it has an attachment. I realized he sent back my picture that I sent him. So I opened it up because I just wanted to stare at my Iron Man head in the picture. <laughs> I open it up and I'm looking at my Iron Man head picture and I go, it doesn't Where look is like it? The, it doesn't, no, the picture was there, but it uh -huh. didn't look, it didn't look like my bookshelf exactly. It was That's kind what of, I'm saying. Where is this head? It was kind of fucked up. It was like, I know I sent him a picture, but the books in the bookshelf, I don't own those books. And that's not my wall. If that's not my copy of Man Love <laughs> on the wall. <laughs> I don't own that teen anal video. <laughs> that's not my dildo. And I realized Ralph's got the same goddamn Iron Man head. Are you kidding me? He meant join the club. Everyone's got one of these, you fucker. He's got it. I am so disgusted. I'm taking the Iron Man head and throwing it out the window. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I'm, oh, I, no. I built a display for it. Right. You got a tissue box. I wanted him on. to be jealous. Yeah. You wanted to have something that he doesn't have. Ralph's got the that same stupid Iron Man doesn't. head. Nobody has. You should, he, he should be happy that John Favreau is so generous that he knew Ralph meant something to Howard. He knew Ralph collected these things. So he sent it to your best friends, best friend, quote unquote, butt buddy, and decided to give you both one because he knew he was a super fan. Why wouldn't you be happy for your friend? We, well, he, no, he sent, he sent Howard the, like Ralph had the commercial version of it. Oh, so he's saying that. It looks just it, like it looks just like the one that Ralph has, but mine was sent by John Favreau. But because it looks identical, it must I thought be John a replica sent, piece. I thought, of, no, no, he wouldn't. I'm sure oh, John, okay. even even John knows. I'm not sending anything to that berry faced asshole. <laughs> I was like, oh wow, that's really nice. He sent both of them helmets. No, no, he had like he got there's like Ralph and Ralph probably paid good money for the for the replica. It was probably like a hundred bucks or something like that for a stupid head that lights up. You know, I'm sure yes. they exist. Yeah. Somebody with no girlfriend, children, and real job to speak of. Yeah, that's right. what you spend your money on. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jason, what, what is it? Unless Ralph got a new helmet, because I've seen the one he has, and it's a cheap plastic. Yeah, that's what this is. Oh, I got to see yours, but Ralph's thing didn't look special when I saw it. It's the same thing I have, and the eyes are lit up. <laughs> well, that's what, when you said the eye, John said the eyes light up. Yeah. I'm like, why would the eyes light up? My I toy lights up. For display purposes, his, Ralph's got the same Iron oh, Man. Oh, no, because oh, I've seen Ralph's. If it's the same. Yeah, it's plastic.
This sounds so, you didn't want to sound like a child because of the toy originally. This sounds so fucking childish. Every, don't you, every, every gif you've seen of the kid being dragged out of a store, like, and, and like, like scraping to stay inside or like kicking and screaming on the ground. That's exactly the visual I have of him right now. She also is wearing the Elsa dress. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 Guys, we're going to stop it right here. We'll she continue. has a Harry Potter cape, too. <laughs> They're all walking around in Universal with the same cakes. What the fuck? Imagine some, the Hermione one. Well, imagine some kid at Halloween getting pissed off because someone else has a fucking Superman outfit <laughs> that they got from. Well, my, my first Halloween costume, my mom put me in a, a white garbage bag and wrote boo on it. I was a ghost. And we, they were pretty simple back started, in the day. Yeah, parents were not nearly as uh, these Involved. costumes now. It's so ridiculous. One of my favorite ones. It's it's done ones that's used quite a bit. Like a lot of people have done it is when the kids like they they walk. They're they're three they're three years old. I guess they would say three years old maybe. And they put they make them into little grandmothers. So they give them a walker. <laughs> <laughs> the cutest things ever. And then uh, some of them when it's an infant, they'll they'll have like a subway sandwich costume for them. So <laughs> it's actually really funny. <laughs> if babies are dressed like food. I saw one dressed up as sushi. I yeah. loved it. <laughs> <laughs> cute as fuck anyway guys we're gonna end this one right here we hope you've enjoyed it we're gonna have parts two and three and whatever it's probably a three-parter because of the amount of audio we have and uh it may be yeah. four parts but, i'm know, sure like, it, do you think do you think this is gonna get more mature as we go along it'll age like a fine w-h-i-n-e benjamin button <laughs> in real time anyway guys we love you take care <laughs> That's expression. I care about the right to shove an eel up a girl's vagina. Yeah, in China, in China, they can't videotape a woman getting shot up. <laughs> <laughs> Coyote fucking. <laughs> That's what we have. Why did we fight the revolutionary war? I think it's obvious. So a woman can fuck a moose. <laughs> and the pages of opera. <laughs> <laughs> England under King George, the Brad Moose fucking. <laughs> what do we do? <laughs>